Hi, welcome to TNT. Brand new working week. Uh, I had a shocking night's sleep last night. I'm barely awake and uh, I'm not really sure what caused it, but been coughing and uh, I may not get to my significant birthday tomorrow. Uh, please send flowers. So anyway, look, uh, the news today is all about taxing. Uh, nothing else seems to matter. Uh, the media has gone, well, the media here in Thailand anyway, has gone completely crazy. Bangkokpost.com, PM faces new leadership test. Tax and release won't unite citizens. The nation's gone even crazier. Tax and homecoming, parole, debate and political fallout. Taxon's parole gives ammunition to his critics. Key events in his political life. Move Forward says Taxon case will raise doubts about favouritism. Group opposed to Taxon's parole vows to seek NACC investigation. And Thai PBS World Corrections Department offers explanation for Taxon's release on parole. PM Sata says he has no plans to meet with Taxon. Move Forward party calls for equal justice for all. A whole cavalcade of stories there relating to Taxon's release from custody yesterday on a Thai PBS front page. Even the international media is reporting it. BBC, Taxon Shinawat, former Thai PM, released on parole. Al Jazeera, The Guardian, uh, Channel News Asia, Thailand's billionaire XPM Taxon, released on parole exactly what those parole conditions are. It'll be interesting to see exactly what he says and who he says it to over the next few months, at least publicly. Let's read one of the stories. Thai PBS World reporting the Corrections Department offers explanation for Taxon's release on parole. And the department said Taxon was included on a list of convicts who qualified for parole as a special case because they're over 70, seriously ill or are disabled and they've spent at least six months in prison or one third of their sentence, whichever is longer. In January, 930 convicts were approved for parole, including 913 formal cases, eight special cases and nine other special cases under the Job Creation and Skill Training Program. The Corrections Department said it hoped its clarification will promote public understanding of Taxon's release would have been interesting to see Taxon released under one of the job creation and skill training programs, making number plates or something. Uh, another story from BangkokPost.com. PM faces new leadership test. Oh, that's Seta Tawisin, by the way, the current Prime Minister of Thailand. But just getting a, a closer look at that shot of Taxon that's been widely shared. We've got his arm and his neck in a brace, otherwise just looking like a, any other tourist who's had a bad day. And the political temperature in Thailand is expected to increase following the release yesterday of the former Prime Minister Taxon Shinawat on parole. And this development poses a challenge, the article says, for Prime Minister Seta Tawisin, who must now demonstrate his independence in decision making and show that Taxon does not wield power. Taxon has long been seen as the de facto leader of the ruling Per Thai party, now led by his youngest daughter, Patongtan Shinawat. Yes, she's the leader of the party, doesn't mean she's Prime Minister. And political observers believe Taxon will continue to exert influence on politics, especially when Per Thai is at the helm of the government. And some analysts anticipate a political shift in power from Mr Satar to Taxon, resulting in a so-called double Prime Minister phenomenon. He doesn't really have any power. It may be that he'll make suggestions and those suggestions may be listened to. But beyond that, he doesn't have any constitutional power. He's just another citizen on parole. And the current Prime Minister, Sater, agrees. He said, don't be dramatic. There's only one Prime Minister under the Constitution. That's me. And he's right. But you can be assured that tax and fever is going to survive a few more days here in Thailand. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Moving into another week, and it looks like uh, we've got hot weather pretty much around Thailand. Much clearer skies around Bangkok. Happy to report that, and we will keep our eyes on uh, that uh, air pollution problem because it will continue to be uh, an issue for at least the next couple of months. Let's move to our next story now. And Thailand set to expand visa-free policy to include more countries. Now. 
don't get too excited here. This is not extending the uh, visa waiver from 30 to 60 or 90 days. This is just adding more countries that in uh, previous times had to have a visa on arrival process. Well, it looks like some of these countries are now going to be offered a visa waiver, which 63 countries already have. And the Prime Minister's announced that Thailand set to expand its visa-free travel policy to include citizens from more countries. And the move follows the recent exemption granted to travellers from China and India, as well as Taiwan and Kazakhstan, aimed at revitalising tourism, a crucial sector for Southeast Asia's second largest economy. During a meeting with Australia's Governor-General, that would have been last week, both parties considered a mutual visa exemption scheme to boost travel and business between their countries. So if you're an Australian, you're coming to Thailand, you arrive visa-free. For Thailand's going to Australia, currently a whole different matter. And the Thai government's also in discussions about similar agreements with European countries within the Schengen visa zone. All those discussions are really going to be helping Thai people, not the people from those countries at this time. And since the beginning of the year, over 533,000 Chinese travellers have visited Thailand, making them the largest group of visitors, followed by Malaysians and South Koreans. And the Tourism and Sports Ministry hoping that Thailand can attract some 35 million foreign visitors this year. Back in uh, 2019, there was some nelly. This far from 40 million foreign tourists coming that year. And uh, ThaiPBSWorld.com reporting that dengue fever cases in Thailand are on the rise. We've reported this in the past, but uh, there's no harm in uh, just reminding you about this issue. And dengue fever is on the rise with a total of 13,126 cases, including 12 fatalities being reported this year. And that's a 2.2 fold increase over the same period last year. Now of this year's cases, 3,776 were children aged 5 to 14, and then a slightly lesser amount, uh, 15 to 24 years old, and then even fewer, 25 to 34. Most of the fatalities were people over 65 years old. And Dr Tong Chai said the best preventative measure now is for everyone, including those who have already been bitten, to apply mosquito repellents to protect them from being bitten by striped mosquitoes, which will bite the other people and spread the disease. So if you've had dengue, uh, one, you could get it again, and two, if the mosquito bites you, then goes and bites somebody else, they could get dengue as well. So do protect yourself from dengue fever, just one of those nasty diseases that uh, seem to thrive in tropical climates. Been a fairly dry, uh, hot season so far, and that means probably the dengue cases will drop until the next wet season in Thailand. It's the Monday TNT. Big thanks to our sponsors, Five Star Marine at fivestarmarinepuket.com. Absolutely beautiful day today, looking out across the Andaman Sea. Uh, flat calm at the moment, probably a bit of a sea breeze coming in later, but a very, very pleasant time of the year. Uh, if you'd like to head out onto Pangar Bay, check out any of those amazing islands, then make sure you contact Five Star Marine uh, when you're heading to Phuket. Now this story, of course, is an important story. There's still a lot of question marks around it, but just a little bit more information that I'm happy to pass on. Uh, but this article says, Thailand's new tax on foreign income, what expats and transferees need to know. This article published by thepatianews.com, I imagine it's a paid article. And it says the following is a guest op-ed from Isan Lawyers. But let's get into it. The Revenue Department began implementing a policy taxing foreign sourced income for Thai citizens and permanent residents. A permanent resident, anybody who stays in Thailand more than 180 days in a calendar year. And this change impacts expats living in Thailand, retirees receiving overseas pensions and individuals transferring funds from abroad. So again, this is an opinion from Isan Lawyers. It's just a little bit more information we can add to what we already know, but don't take this as purely gospel. 
Previously, only income earned within Thailand was subject to income tax. Now, under a department instruction, any foreign sourced income brought into Thailand, that's including for Thais, becomes taxable. And this includes, potentially, salaries from overseas employment, pensions and retirement income, investment income like dividends and capital gains, and rental income from abroad. And the key requirements, according to this uh, this op-ed, if you're a Thai citizen or expat resident, that means 180 days or more per year, you must report your foreign income on your tax return if you bring it into Thailand. The tax now applies to income brought in in any tax year, uh, provided it was earned after the 31st of December 2023. You'll be taxed based on the progressive tax rates used for domestic income, ranging from 0 to 35%. However, you may be eligible for foreign tax credits to avoid double taxation. So according to Isan lawyers, this is what they suggest you should be doing at the moment in relation to this issue. Uh, Planning is crucial, they say. Understanding your tax obligations for foreign income is essential. Uh, Impact on investment strategies. Expats may need to reconsider how they invest overseas and manage their finances, potentially minimising income repatriation to Thailand. And in that case, as I've said all along, every single person is going to have a different situation and will need to be sorted out individually with uh, probably some sort of tax lawyer or accountant. Potential administrative burden, and I think this is the one that's worrying most people, reporting and compliance requirements may increase, especially for complex financial situations. Now, you might be a retiree getting a single source income from your country, and suddenly you may, may potentially uh, be involved in having to file an annual tax return and keeping, well, more precise records. And uh, clarity is still needed. This is the key issue. The implementation is ongoing and some aspects remain unclear. And stay updated on official pronouncements and seek professional guidance. So that's the opinion there from Isan Lawyers. Now there's plenty more information to come on this. Uh, We simply don't have black and white answers to many of the questions that a lot of you are asking. But uh, in the interest of trying to provide a little bit more information and clarity, we've read out that story and it's published in thepartyanews.com. Oh, just further to that last story, uh, just this final paragraph. The new tax law on foreign income in Thailand introduces significant changes for expats and individuals transferring funds. While uncertainties remain, proactive planning and seeking professional advice are crucial to navigate this new landscape. Remember, consulting a tax advisor can help you understand blah, blah, blah. That's the ad part of that story, which is fine but from Isan Lawyers. Now, uh, in my case, I mean, I've got money transferring from uh, Google in America to Thailand. Now, the tax is taken out in America. Will I have to pay more tax when it comes to Thailand? I will have to seek some professional advice about that, which, uh, in fact, I'm doing today because I'm heading down to Phuket for a very busy day indeed. Let's head to our next story, and it's uh, published by the Jerusalem Post, that's jpost.com, Israeli flight from Thailand faced attack by hostile elements. So it looks like it's the flight from Thailand back to your home, uh, which are causing most of the problems at the moment for some people. Let's find out more. Hostile elements attempted to take over the communication network of an LL plane flying from Phuket to Ben Gurion Airport on Saturday night and divert it from its destination but happy to report the plane reached its destination safely. And this is the second time such an incident has occurred in the past week. And the incident took place over an area where the Iran-backed Houthis are active, although sources in Somalia told KAN that a group in the de facto state Somaliland, which recently signed an agreement with Ethiopia, is responsible for the attempted attack. And during the incident, instructions were given to the crew, that's the, uh, the flight crew, that were different from their set route, raising concerns that someone was trying to damage the plane or lead it to dangerous areas, and maybe even to conduct a kidnapping. 
and the crew disobeyed the instructions, quickly switched to alternative means of communication while also checking the data against other air traffic controllers and realising they were being misled. So people with bad intentions uh, potentially being able to interrupt the communications on flights, something else that pilots are going to have to keep their eyes on in the future, or their ears on in that case. Thanks for watching today. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand. I'm going to have to get some sort of cat nap, or I might have a sleep in the car on the way, and not while I'm driving, by the way. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, and uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.